Hello, namaste. This is Tim Halloran. I'm an astrologer here in Savannah, Georgia. This is a weekly astrological forecast. I put these videos on YouTube once a week. You can help support future videos by purchasing a reading from me at the link below. It's Wednesday the 4th of February. We're into our first week of the second month of 2015. And the energy this week is pretty personal, pretty subjective. And if we're willing to get into it, also very deep and considerably transformative, yes? So I don't know about you guys, but I got totally washed out these last couple days. I mean, this last weekend we came out of, the moon was in Cancer, we had Mars conjunct Chiron, Venus conjunct Neptune, all in Pisces. It was watery, watery, watery. Then on Monday, the moon moved into Leo, and yesterday at 6 p.m. Eastern time, we had a full moon in Leo. Leo also being very subjective, very personal, yes? And with all this Pisces energy, you know, it can just go very, very deep with this Mercury retrograde. We can be digging very deep. We can be seeing a very good picture of who we are as individuals and individual souls, yes? And although this is a full moon in Leo yesterday, and we got Jupiter in Leo, and they kind of get this reputation for being fun, partying, and you know, all this kind of expressive exuberance and all of this. You know, we don't always learn about ourselves and our greater story and our greater picture simply by, you know, having a song come on the radio and we say, oh, that's my song, now I remember who I am and my past. No, sometimes we learn about who we are by having exposed the parts of ourselves that we are not, having that part stripped away. Sometimes we get our stuff triggered by other people, revealing our differences, yes? This full moon in Leo, Aquarius, Sun, polarity, you know, is really a challenge, and the challenge is bridging these two. And the bridge, the challenge here, is how do we bridge the totally unique individual self that has its own set of qualities coming from its own set of experiences, coming from the past, that brings forth all of these unique flavors. How do we bridge this with the collective? How do we communicate this with other people? How do we express our heartfelt passion and desire to a world where there's all of these other innumerable, unique and personal heartfelt desires and stories and pasts and histories. Yes, and with the Jupiterian energy, it may be possible that, in fact, our own individual story, our personality, is accentuated, it's exaggerated, it's inflated. And rather than me saying, oh, that's a problem, be sure to deflate that ego, I mean, this is, this is natural. This is the energy, this is the seasonal changes. So this is an opportunity for us to see our own ego, our personality, our story on a deeper level because it is so on the surface and available and upfront, yeah. In fact, it can be so upfront and big, it can easily brush up against or bump into other egos, yes. And this can oftentimes be, like I said, a reminder of who we are by seeing each other's differences, yes. And, you know, the real reminder and I think key to surviving these energies most smoothly and most gently is we have to be very slow. We have to watch for our own instinctual responses. And we also need to be very considerate of our own emotional reciprocation towards other people. And I call this emotional intelligence. That means that we're not just listening to the words or the actions, the surface level dramas that are going on, but we are tuning into deeply our own feelings as well as the feelings of other people. Yes, because it's very easy to take things personally these days. And we have to remember that this is not a problem. We are reminding each other of our own unique individual story and our history that has formed this individual heartfelt passion within each of us, which is why it can be considerably brash and explosive and instinctual, okay? Because a lot of this we're saying is passion, yeah? It's I have this desire, I feel 
powerful. I feel invigorated about this cause, about this belief, and I identify with this, yes? And this can be a way that we learn about ourselves, is having that part be agitated, brought to the surface. Oh, this grinds my gears. This reminds me of this past experience, and I have this instinctual response. And something to remember is that, you know, a lot of times it's our closest friends, it's our associations, it's our lovers, it's our beloveds that oftentimes create this friction and this tension and this explosion forth. So we really need to remember to be slow, to not jump the gun with our instinctual responses, and to remember that, you know, it's not so much that these people are perpetrating upon us, that these people are oppressing upon us, they are reminding us of the oppression that we have already experienced in the past that has brought to us, has gifted us this deep, heartfelt passion and desire to make changes, to deliver our own truth in such a way that it actually betters the world and uplifts the world and uplifts other people. And this can be the challenge with Mercury retrograde, full moon in Leo, you know, it's like, how do we speak a similar language? How do we communicate with all these other people, especially when there is this bumping into each other and brushing into each other? And it's very interesting because I see it as being, you know, there's really two fundamental different types of egos we're talking about. There are tellers and listeners. Tellers like to tell their personal truth, their personal story, their way of seeing things and it can oftentimes turn into an I'm right and everybody else is wrong type of situation. Yeah, and if anybody else has a disagreement with me, that means that I'm wrong, that means that they actually have to be wrong because I can't be wrong, yeah. Or we could have an inferior ego, which means that I always feel like I'm wrong, I always feel like I'm doing things, I'm messing things up, therefore I need to listen to everybody else's advice, I need to listen to everybody else's stories, yes. And these are both ego identities, and they both have an interesting way of making it all about themselves, myself, my story. Even though one of them can be the look at me and the other one can be, ah, I need help, I need to look to everybody else, yes, it's still, ah, it needs to be, I need to be fixed, I need to be looked at. And what I think is interesting is when all these egos come out of the woodwork these days, as it's like the powerful egos bump into each other. I've got this powerful history. I've got this power, powerful truth. And then the inferior egos come together and bump into each other. Oh, I notice all your inferiorities. Oh, I notice all your inferiorities. Well, I feel bad about my inferiorities. Well, so do I. So we're bumping into each other. It is interesting how the people that tend to agitate us the most oftentimes tend to be the best reflections of ourself, yes. And this can be a time where we see very clearly the qualities in ourselves that are overinflated and the qualities in ourselves that we're going to say is a kind of righteousness that is seated in truth, that is a part of our individual expression that we do need to stand up for. Because the key is not to tell too much or to listen too much, but we have to find a balance and a harmony here, which is very challenging. Yeah, we can say that this is like the challenge of the age. As we're moving into this age of Aquarius, all of these different fragments, these different cultures, these different religions, these different pasts, histories, culturally, nationally, we're all coming together. It's all up on the surface. It's all very apparent and we've got to somehow find a way to be able to interact with other people and embody our truth, not sacrifice our own individuality and simultaneously not impress or dominate or tyrant over other people's individual expressions and truths. We have to really find a way to listen and receive as well as show and tell and I think that's what Leo very much is about is Leo is show and tell. And Leo is not just the ego identity. Leo is your individuality. And your individuality is not an illusion. Your individuality is your soul. And your soul is seated within your heart. So this is often a time that we have revealed to us the story of our own soul. And we're going to call this also the inner child. Yes, Leo is the son, the child, spontaneous, free, and this is who we all are in our essence, yes, 
as I talked about in last week's video. What we very much need to practice these days is forgiveness. And the way to be able to access this forgiveness and this unconditional love, you know, and we have to forgive and unconditionally love some very dark, painful, bleak pasts and situations and, you know, realities here. All right, and this is not an easy thing. And I don't want to belittle this by saying, oh yeah, all is God, all is light. It's very, very easy, just unconditionally love everybody. No, this can be very, very challenging. But in order to move in this direction, it's a good practice to remember the inherent innocence within everything, yes? And this is a good time to understand that this inher inherent innocence is there through the Leonian energy. See what causes these emotional triggers and these emotional reactions from within ourselves, yeah? And you know, it's funny because I'm giving the advice that, you know, we need to be slow, we need to be patient, we need to forgive, we need to be nice is really where this is leading to. We need to be nice and not too brashful and sharp. And I came out here yesterday to shoot this video during the full moon, which was actually exactly square my Pluto, and I have Uranus exactly on my Mars. And this energy is so natally strong for me. I mean, I was so brash and thoughtless and just, you know, it was just too ironic what I was saying versus the energy that I was putting off, you know. So we can see this within ourselves a lot of times these days. We can see ourselves have these emotional reactions and these types of things and we just kind of watch ourselves instinctually run, you know, into a certain direction. And that's okay because that instinctual response, that emotional response is revealing to us the story of our inner child, of how our own innocence got put through various personal and unique trials and tribulations that developed this individuality that has its own unique passion and desire, heartfelt desire, yeah, that gives us the motivation and the life, the life within our veins, within our blood, to be able to make changes in this world, yes. So I talked a little bit about it in last week's video. How do we get to this forgiveness? How do we inherently see the innocence within all beings? And you know, what I, what I think it really takes us into is the understanding that, you know, oppression doesn't really happen unless there is a wounded child that got oppressed and feels angry and desperate. And so it takes it out on the, on the rest of the world, yeah. And that's a far out thing to share, you know. And it's really a reflection of my own personal truth. So this is my own Leo personal truth to give to you. And you know, what it is, is it's coming from someone who thought, thinks an awful lot about these very painful uh, situations, you know. Wars, holocausts, rapes and pillage, the domination of masculinity over femininity for thousands of years. And it deeply troubles me, yes. But at the same time, I have to keep going back into my own story and the more I keep going back into my own story, I see myself playing out in all these roles. I've been the perpetrator, I've been the perpetrated, I've been the victim, I've been the victimizer, yes? And if we take a very good clean look at ourselves and we look at our defense mechanisms, our reactions, our emotions, we can see this truth starting to come out within ourselves. So making peace with the world is a way of making peace with ourselves. How can we forgive this part of ourselves? yes? Well, we have to eliminate the notion that all happens only for negative reasons. And this is the personal truth that I'm going to share with you. And that is no matter how desolate, low vibrational, disgusting the situation is, no matter how prison-like, no matter what hell realm we are in, no matter the amount of suffering, of oppression, of suppression, of tyranny put upon us, it always creates an equal and opposite reaction of passion. Therefore, now, no matter how much time we've been suppressed, how much time we've been in prison, how much time we've been in hell, it creates an equal and opposite reaction of passion that is our truth, our dedication, our life for existing that gives purpose and meaning to our existence. That way we can go out into the world and having learned what it's like to be suppressed, oppressed, beaten up, we can create the opposite force within this world. 
So this kind of dance of personalities suppressing one another, beating up each other and all and all of this, I encourage seeing beyond good and evil, right and wrong, power versus love. These are all acts, these are all stories that we all share together which is there to take us to the deeper inherent truth that all of us are inherently spirit souls and innocent children. And we just want to freely express ourselves, our individuality, like singing a song, like painting a picture, okay? And if we can keep that in mind despite all of the circumstances, and I'm not saying that the circumstances are always fun, I'm not saying that your instinctual reaction to fight, to rebel, to push back is wrong. But it's something that we need to practice in ourselves continuously to open up our own hearts. Because so long as we're seeing the world divided in myself versus an enemy, and there is enemies out there, there are ulterior forces out there, as long as we see it that way, we will close our heart down in fear. And we will put up defenses. This way you can't hurt me. This way the demons can't get through to me. I'm going to be protected. Okay. And this is not our fault for doing this. This is a natural reaction, all right? However, we have to be aware that we want to be de taking these defenses down if we actually want to be uplifting our own heart, stepping back into our own inherent innocence, and be able to effectively reach other people. Because the only way we can effectively reach other people is if we are being nice, is if we have a heart of temperance and forgiveness, yeah. Because if we're seeing other people as enemies, that's a way of closing down to them and that's just going to create more friction, more bumping into each other, and then the two opposite ends get more and more inflamed, more exaggerated, and it just gets fiercer and fiercer and fiercer until there is total destruction. And this total destruction, we can say, this chemical reaction is not even necessarily a bad thing. All this is also natural because another way that we oftentimes learn about who we actually are in our individual truth is by having everything else crumble away. And we can identify with so many different things and then it gets smashed together and it all crumbles. And all we are left with at the end of the day is our actual naked self. And this is what Leo fundamentally is. It is our naked self. It is our heart of unconditional love and also dignity towards ourselves and our story. That I have been put through the tumbler so many times that now I can reach any tumultuous situation from a place of stability and understanding that even in the most devastating situations, good can arise from this. And okay, there's some clashing here, good can arise from this. Because this brings us into a much more peaceful and forgiving and more receptive aspect of ourself, which is the understanding that you can't fight for God, you can't fight for spirituality, you can't even fight for yourself beyond a certain level. You can only fight with God, with spirituality, or with yourself. And this is an interesting truth that we can be realizing these days as we can see how much we are struggling and fighting with ourselves. And this can often be leading us into a surrender, yeah? And you know, this person who's speaking to you, you know, I learn a lot of these things through falling on my face, through falling, you know, through basically learning things the hard way and then I share them with you. So it's very easy to say this stuff and it's another thing where we are just watching this stuff happen we know, that, you know we, we know our truth, we know the spiritual essence, and we still have to watch these things play out because we're still learning lesson after lesson after lesson, and we're enjoying the story, we're not skipping to the final chapter, yes? So how I became personally afflicted this week, this is a personal story, is I have this ring that I wear that I replace with this one because it feels too weird to not have the ring that I lost that is a ring I've been wearing for most of my life. And for me, it symbolizes my individuation, my coming into spirituality, yes. And I must have a very personal, subjective attachment to it because when I lost it, I took it very personally. Yeah. 
Yeah. I had been thinking days before, wow, this means a lot to me, and then it disappeared. And I mean, it literally disappeared. It's not like I took it off. It disappeared. I took it so personally. I cursed out the heavens because it felt like I was being intentionally put through this ringer and having all this stuff stripped away from me and all this instinctual response and all this came up for me. Yeah. And that was revealing my own deeper personal history, even going into past lives, even going into a very deep unconscious part of myself. And so kind of being in this position of objectively viewing our own human instinctual reactions and our emotions and our taking things personally, it is revealing to us our deeper story, our deeper truth. And then we can simultaneously see what strengths, what passion is there to embody and through just letting everything fall away, everything burn away, you know what, I'm not my ring, I'm not my individualization that happened that time, you know, I have grown, I have become more liberated. It's time to surrender, it's time to let go. Yeah, and it's easy to say that and it's another thing to do it. And in order to do this in life sometimes, it requires this crumbling, it requires this getting beaten up, and then it happens automatically, yeah. You can fight and you can fight and you can fight till you're totally exhausted, till you're totally beat up and you will reach this breaking point. And in that breaking point becomes the release, becomes the realization, becomes the understanding of why all of this breaking and this beating and this suppression and all of these feelings are actually taking us to a point of being more freely and liberated in our own individual unique expression. That way we can sing our song, we can do our dance, we could broadcast ourself in such a way that we don't take things so personally anymore, yeah? And we can stand up for ourselves when we need to, and we can listen to other people, we can approach other people from the position of being forgiving and nice and gentle and not so much gripped on to this thing that we're fighting for so much, yeah? Because it's this, I gotta fight for this, I gotta defend this. It comes out of this wound. It comes out of this previous oppression and suppression that we need to pay attention to, yeah? Because the whole point is that our inner child is pissed off because it's been wounded and all of this storytelling, this drama, this clashing is only there for the, the, the inner child to make its voice be heard. That way we can take things back into our inner child and cradle and nurture ourselves and really practice. I love you. I love you. I love you. You know, instead of beat up our egos, try to kill off your egos. Love your ego. Whatever your name is. James Teller. I love you, James Teller. I love you, James Teller. I love you, James Teller. The nicer and the more forgiving we can be of ourselves the nicer and the more forgiving we can be of other people. And once we have that position and that broadcasting that is gentle, is soft, is warm, and is nurturing, then we can start effectively broadcasting our truth and uplifting other people. If we do it from the kind of crusady, converty, I need you to understand this for your own well-being, you know, you can feel the, the harshness in that. And that is not as effective to reaching other people. Yeah, if we just start exploding, and la, 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 I'm gonna unload all this stuff on you about my truth, about what's important, it's not effective if reaching other people. The most effective language of reaching others is through love, compassion, gentle nurturance, and acceptance of everything, despite how it might seem. We understand that there is an inherent innocence within everything. So these themes do continue throughout this week, you know. On Thursday, we have the moon moving into Virgo very early in the day. And then we have Mercury, retrograde Mercury forming an aspect to asteroid Vesta. This will hopefully give us a little bit more focus to pick ourselves up from the wishy-washiness that we could have been going through. But at the same time, this theme is going to continue through this weekend. Friday, we have the sun opposite to that Jupiter and Leo. The Leonian energy is staying with us. Our voice, our expression, what we want to give to the world is of very, very most importance right now, yes. And also this weekend, we'll have the moon move into Libra but we also have Venus sextile to Pluto and Venus conjunct Chiron. 
So although we may be with our intimate friends, we may be attempting to converse more, we're still going very deep into this stuff. And again, you know, I like to remind you that it is our most personal friends, our loveds, our beloveds that oftentimes take us into our wounds, take us into our own depth, our own shadow. And this is not because they are the oppressor, they are the perpetrator. They are simply embodying and acting that way in order to get a response from you. That way it can lead us to a place of forgiveness and healing. And I thought you were perpetrating me, but you are actually my beloved friend and you were simply triggering a response from me to remind me of my own wounds and therefore simultaneously my own passions. Yes, and we do have to watch out for over explosiveness, over bluntness. Yes, with Uranus on the south node, it's not about your way or the highway. I'm just going to erupt and you know what, blah, 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 blah. This is what you need to know. This is what I'm going to do. Screw that. I'm done working with you. The key is the north node in Libra, which is harmony, which is balance with other people. And this weekend with the moon being in Libra, let's use this balance and this harmony to our advantage as we do plunder the personal, as we do plunder the intimate. And we allow this transformation to nap naturally take us into the position of being a more soft, nurturing, and therefore more effective beacon of wisdom, of truth, and love to the entire world. So, we can take a look at your individual chart. We can see what expression is desiring to come out of you by taking a look at your own past, your own personal history. And you know, my chart readings do take a look at our wounds. This is where I see simultaneously your strength and your passion and your capability to be a healer and selflessly distribute your healing rays and your compassion to the world to be a part of this uplifting movement. We are, we, where we are moving from a right versus wrong, lies versus truth, enemy versus friend type of reality to a reality where every single other human being on this planet is like a brother or a sister to us. Therefore, we can relax. Therefore, we can be at peace and we can trust one another and not have to put up so many defenses and bring this world into the nurturance, the warmth, the intimacy that it truly deserves to reside in. So I'm wishing all the best to you and your beloveds in that regard. Namaste.